It's about that time of day again. Boy, that time flies when you're having fun. My name is Joseph. It's Wednesday evening, April the 12th, 2017. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, gold, euro and FDAX tonight. Crude is bearish and sitting at a quadruple, yes, four measured legs down this evening, which is a huge clue that sellers would likely be taking profit and waiting for a better place to sell tomorrow. The S&P is bearish, trading right at the low of a range, just a few points from a peppering of different major support levels. So we're waiting patiently for a correction on the S&P to avoid chasing this move lower. We'll have some guidance on that in a moment. Gold is bullish after comments about the strength of the U.S. dollar hit the news wires late this afternoon. Afternoon. And a strong spike higher tells us we're looking for two of the four spike scenarios, either a spike in channel or a bull wedge tomorrow. We're going to dig into gold in detail in just a few moments. Euro's bullish with either a spike in channel or a wedge tonight, which tells us to look for one of two scenarios. And we're watching for two-legged pullbacks for the most reliable buying opportunities tomorrow. The FDAX is bearish and trading in what might either be a spike in range or a spike in channel tonight both of which are giving us important clues as to where the most reliable trading opportunities will occur tomorrow. Guys, are you guys excited yet? Boy, oh boy, these big moves have been incredible this week. It's been a great month of April so far. These markets continue to give us amazing trading opportunities, and tomorrow is looking like more of the same. You know how we roll. Get another great newsletter video for you guys tonight with plenty of reliable opportunities setting up for tomorrow. Before we jump into those charts, though, I want to remind you, only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog at SidewaysMarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry. It's only a small snippet of the entire version of the YouTube channel. Go into that YouTube video link in the description of the video. Follow that link in the description of the YouTube video and follow me over here to the blog and join me on the blog for the full-length version. Right? While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Give me your name and your email address and I'll send you an email every evening when the newsletter is ready to go. Follow me on social media, lower left-hand corner. Plenty of different ways to follow me on social media. I'm always posting important charts and updates throughout the day on my social media channels. Grab those charts. How easy is that all the charts from tonight's video you can have those charts on your computer for tomorrow right where it says click here to download today's charts go to the blog at sideways markets and download those charts and have it ready for your session tomorrow and do not forget to grab your free pass you're going to learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs get off youtube right grab that free pass and come join me as a guest tomorrow if you're not an advanced member here at school of trade you definitely want to grab that free pass in the upper right hand corner and please don't forget if you're brand new here to the sot community we get a great frequently asked questions page on the right hand side of the website and i'm always here standing by to help you guys out holler at me with that live support tool on the right hand side of the website hope you guys are having a great week here finished up hump day we survived a wednesday session and boy it was it was a wacky one before we jump into our charts though and put the plan together for tomorrow let's make sure we talk briefly here about what the schedule looks like for thursday the 13th I don't think it's on Lucky Thursday the 13th. I think I think it's Friday the 13th. I think they let us off the hook on that one this week. So tomorrow, Thursday the 13th. Now, of course, we always start by looking at what the news looks like later on tonight. We get some minor news from Labor Force Survey at 9.30 p.m. I'm not expecting that to move the needle too much in the overnight session, so don't worry about that too much. We do have some news coming from China. That news will shortly be out after midnight. Usually we say it sometime between 1 o'clock and 2 a.m. Eastern time. Look for that news from China tomorrow morning, early, early, early morning. Morning, right so late Asia right early London tomorrow morning then of course we'll skip on down we're gonna peppering here at 5 a.m. right from it from Italy and of course the jobless claims in the PPI at 8 30 a.m. so really not a lot here tomorrow in the uh, London session right that of course 3 a.m. until 8 a.m. block right not a lot in that London session right the news tomorrow morning typical Thursday morning 8 30 jobless claims and we get the PPI report I'm not expecting much out of jobless claims but we'll definitely be watching the PPI number right tomorrow morning at 8 30 and we'll see how the market reacts to that heads up for tomorrow also tomorrow we do have an early close in the bond markets at 2 p.m. 
Eastern time, right? What is it? What's up with that? We got Friday, of course, being the Good Friday holiday, right? Friday, of course, is Good Friday. That is the Friday before the Easter weekend. If you guys are out for week, for Easter weekend this weekend, travel safely, right? Come back in one piece. Make sure you come back with all your eyes, ears, and and all twelve of your fingers and toes. Right? Be aware of that though. Friday is a holiday. The stock market will be closed on Friday. Futures markets, of course are all electronic, so they'll be open on Friday. It will be a relatively low-volume session, though, on Friday, so make sure you plan accordingly. As I always say, be careful in the afternoon sessions, right? The afternoon, especially on gold, euro, and crude oil. S&P, well, obviously DAX would fall into that, too, being a European market. The S&P is really the only market you want to be trading deep into the afternoon. So be aware, tomorrow afternoon, we get the bond market closing early. Anticipation ahead of that, right? Uh, that Good Friday, uh, again, Friday. It's not really a holiday, right? Uh, Friday is not really a holiday. Uh, should I say it is a holiday, excuse me, but not all the markets are, are closed, right? So stock market is closed. Uh, markets are markets are open in the futures markets, right, electronically, but they will be relatively low volume. We'll talk more about that in tomorrow night's newsletter. So bottom line is not a lot of news on the schedule for tomorrow. We get that news at 8.30 a.m. And, of course, the early afternoon closing bell, right, the early close on the bond market at 2 p.m. Expect to see volume drop off considerably after 2, 2.15 tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon. Another great day today, but we're only as good as our as our next trade here. Let's get ready. Let's talk about gold here right now. The trading strategy on gold for tomorrow. Gold is bullish after comments about the strength of the U.S. dollar hit the news wires late this afternoon. And this strong spike higher tells us to look for a spike in channel or a bull wedge. Either way, the bulls have control of this market. But this sudden spike higher most likely is a lot of bulls still waiting for a pullback. I would imagine there's a lot of bulls right now sitting on the sidelines because they didn't want to chase after this move. So we want to stay patient for tomorrow. The most reliable buying opportunities will likely be a two-legged pullback to support or a bear trap if price keeps pushing higher. Targets for the buyers, but that double up, right? That double up is drawn off this news spike from earlier today. Now, of course, you can see here on gold, kind of a quick recap on gold. The day starts off, and you can see an example of this also on the euro. This is a little bit easier to see as a triangle. You can call it a range, whatever the case may be. But with that day starting off, just chopping around that prior day high, right, yesterday's high, right, we had a trading range, right, whether you want to call it a true range or you call it a triangle. The day started off with a trading range. Now we know that most trading range breakouts fail, but here's an example where we see a successful breakout pullback. This is key. Strong move up, pull back. Remember, when we see a breakout of a trading range, what's usually going to happen here? You're usually going to see people fading that move and trying to send it right back down. And you can definitely see that's that that, that happened. You can definitely see there was a little bit of a little bit of a fist fight that broke out there because again the day started off inside of a range. Anytime we break out of a range, you're always thinking fade that breakout because most breakouts fail. I do realize back in the good old days, right? Back back in the good old days, right? You used to be able to trade a breakout more aggressively, right? But the markets are way too tight. There's very little error, right? There's very little slack in these markets these days, and barely anybody misses a beat. And people know that trading breakouts are not a reliable way to do it anymore. However, when a breakout is this strong, it holds a pullback and goes higher. Now we have to give this market to the bulls. It's a successful breakout pullback. Most breakouts fail. Do not assume that every breakout will look like this. I don't want to hear people right saying from now on I'm going to break, I'm going to buy that breakout. That is an easy way to go broke in your account because usually it'll end up right back into that trading range. Now, with that said, trading a breakout of this much strength on the gold, I really want to talk about one of four scenarios. It looks like we have a giveaway right now for a spike in channel or a spike in wedge. But let's break this down for a moment. Now that you know what a breakout looks like, now that we have a breakout, think of one of these four breakout scenarios. Here are, here are four breakout scenarios that you want to keep in mind. First scenario, strong breakout, right? The all in baller breakout, strong breakout, pull back, make a new higher high. If we make a new higher high, now we can draw that trend line up and that becomes a spike and channel. That's scenario number one. With a spike and channel, I'm watching these prior swings 
and I'm looking to buy low. That's scenario number one. Scenario two starts off with a spike, same thing as before. Pulls back, same as before. Makes a new high, same as before. We draw that trend line out. We project it down. But now, rather than rotating down to the low and going back up, we see a we see a failed rotation or a partial rotation, and we keep going higher and retest the high. That's the key. If we keep going higher and we retest the high again, now we know this is no longer a spike in channel. What is it? It's got to be a spike and wedge. Back this sucker out, and this becomes a spike and wedge. Now, a spike and wedge is a little bit different than a spike and channel. Spike and channels, tell you to look for measured moves. A spike and wedge gives you a major level of resistance right at that, right at that, the vertex of that, of that wedge. Same thing applies. Find areas of support and look to buy low, right? There's your spike and wedge. What is scenario number two? Scenario number two, we saw this earlier on the S&P, spike up, pull back. Now, instead of making a new higher high, what happens? It double tops, right? We double top and we immediately see profit taking and it pulls back. It's not a spike in channel. It's not a spike in wedge. What is it? It's a spike and range. We saw this earlier in a bearish environment on the S&P earlier on in this newsletter. How do we trade a spike and range? Two scenarios. One, trap low. Two, fake out, break out, pull back. Those are the two scenarios we're looking to be a buyer using a spike and range. Next up, last but not least, Fourth scenario, strong spike up. I'm running out of room. I should have I should have prepared a little bit more for this slide, right? Strong spike up. This time around, we pull back. We try to go back to retest the high, but what happens? We fail to retest the high and we pull back off that high. What's going to happen now? Yeah, we're going to see a falling resistance. That falling resistance trend line can be projected down to that low and now we have what? We have a flag Flag patterns are relatively rare, right, when you compare them to the others. Flags are also some of the most difficult to trade because you've got to trade them carefully, right, with a helmet on. You want to buy the low of that channel, okay? That's the hard one because you really got to make sure, right, you, you, use, you use some guts and buy the low of that channel really low because you don't want to buy into that trend line coming down overhead. The other, of course, is going to be that two-legged correction, that two-legged pullback, using the high of that channel, right? So those are the four scenarios. The spike in channel is the most common. With a spike in channel, I'm looking to buy those dips. I'm looking to buy those dips on a spike in wedge. Same thing, buying those dips, finding those areas of support. Remember the one thing about a spike in channel, spike in channels like to go for measured moves, right? Measured moves. A spike in wedge will usually only go right to that resistance target at the vertex of that wedge. A spike in range will also go for a measured move, right? So watch that measured move, right? Spike in range, buy below the low of that range, and buy with that little fake out, breakout pullback that we talked about on crude oil earlier on in today's video. And of course, the hard one, right? The hard one is also the rarest. It's the flag pattern. The tough part about a flag pattern is making sure that you, again, have the guts to buy the low of that channel. Looking for traps, looking for two-legged pullbacks, low of that channel, or you've got to buy a two-legged pullback, right? Trap low, use the top of that channel, right, to buy. And again, you'll see that measured move come into play for a target on a on a flag, right? Those are the four scenarios we look for when it comes to trading a breakout or any strong spike, right, in one right, in one direction. So now back to our chart. Thanks for sticking around with me here through that long-winded explanation. I wanted to make sure I covered that for you, though. Right, so as the market spikes higher here, what happens, right? It pulls back. They hold the breakout, right? They hold the pullback. That prevents the sellers from taking this back into that range. And what do they do? They make a new higher high. Now, that new higher high tells me this could be what? Yeah, one of two scenarios. Either a spike in channel, right? Spike in channel or what? Yeah, a spike and wedge. 
those are the two scenarios, right? Those are the two scenarios we're now watching. Now, with that said, we have one more thing to keep in mind here. This whole, this whole move started because some comments out of the White House today about the strength of the U.S. dollar, right? Talking about how strong the U.S. dollar is. And that, of course, causes gold, a negative, right, a, an inverse correlation to the U.S. dollar to spike higher. Now, anytime we know there's some sort of news-fueled spike, take that spike and double it up for your target. Now, this does not just apply to crude or gold, right? This applies to every market, okay? It doesn't matter which market. Anytime you have a major news event that creates a spike, you can use that spike too. It doesn't need to be unexpected news like this was. This was not a planned or a scheduled news event. So that gives us a really easy target up there at that double up at 92.3. So now we have a good breakdown. What's the plan from here? We have our spike and our channel or spike and and our wedge. How will we know? If we pull back to test the low of that channel, we know we have a spike in channel. If it doesn't, if it rolls over and goes higher, then we know we have a spike in wedge. Either way you slice it, we want to be buying pullbacks. And usually in these situations, it's going to be a two-legged pullback of some sorts. What I mean by that is, is let's take, for example, this area of support at 85.6. A two-legged pullback in the short term would look like this, a bounce, trap low, and back up. That will typically be your most reliable way to trade. Incorporate that moving average, get the moving average coming over as well, right? A two-legged pullback. Again, the easy trade is going to be the pullback trade. The pullback trade is too easy. It's, it's, a, it's a big neon sign there blinking that says buy me. And usually those real obvious, obvious textbook trades, right? They're usually not going to be the most reliable. Usually only textbook trades happen in textbooks. So a two-legged pullback is also is one of the things looking for tomorrow. Another thing you want to watch out for tomorrow too is this is a deeper correction. Wouldn't surprise me one bit, right? Deeper correction here. And if we see more than one leg to that, right, follow that trend line off the high, right? Two-legged pullback creates a trend line, right? And then watch for it to break up, get back above it. A beautiful opportunity there, right, on a multi-leg correction, right, coming back to an area of support. The bottom line right now is, is we're watching all of these areas of support, right, the 85.6, the moving average. We're watching the 82.7. We're watching all of these areas here right now to look for a chance to buy that dip. Again, it'll either be a wedge, and if it's a wedge, that will give us another area of support, two-legged pullback there, or it ends up coming back as a spike and channel, two-legged pullback, right, and buying the dip right there. Again, watch out if it does give an extended pullback here. Watch out for this to be an extended pullback, right? You may get a little bit of selling opportunities as the market pulls back, but be careful trying to get too aggressive on the sell side until it collapses because you know that buyers be waiting here, right, to buy low. What would it take, by the way? What would it take? Well, that little breakout pullback there would collapse back down, right? So kind of imagine this now coming down, Buyers are waiting, buyers are waiting. They're trying to buy low and they're expecting to see that hold. Well, it doesn't, right? It collapses and fails back over. When that happens, it becomes a bear market. And then we do the same thing, right? Same thing, two-legged right? Two -legged correction and look to sell high once again. Whenever the market turns from bullish to bearish, it's got to do so on strength. And when it does that on strength, you don't want to sell low anymore, right? I don't want to sell down here anymore because that's going to be far too low to be selling, right? So wait for once again, right, that one two-legged move higher, right, and look to sell it right back down again from there. Using, right, wait for strength before you try to fade this move. There is no telling how high this market will go here tomorrow. We definitely have a target up there at 92.3, so watch out for that. And now you guys have a good plan. Find those areas of support, right? Wait patiently for that. If it doesn't pull all the way back, it becomes a wedge. And then keep looking for those traps. Keep looking for those two-legged pullbacks, right, as we finish up the move up to that double-up target at 92.3 tomorrow. Gold looking very, very perky here right now, right along with the euro.
I want to remind you guys, if you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, make sure you dig in the description of that YouTube video. Follow those links. Come here on the blog, right? Join me on the blog at Sideways Markets, the full-length version. Come over to the website at schooloftrade.com. And while you're here, make sure you join that free trial. We get a great free trial on the homepage of our website. You'll learn all about how I trade here at School of Trade on our free trial. Learn more about what I call the Professional Traders Transformation, our beginner, intermediate, and advanced course. I've helped thousands of traders find reliable trading opportunities as part of our membership packages. And please don't forget, don't be a stranger. I'm always here to help you guys out. Hit me up on the live support tool on the right-hand side of the website. I've taken up way too much of your valuable time. Don't forget, join the mailing list. Join the free trial. Holler at us if you've got any questions. Tomorrow morning, we're going to trade tomorrow morning in real time with all of our advanced members at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Boy, oh boy, a lot of cover here tonight. Hope you guys had a great day out there. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.